Hey guys, this is Alex Ramsey, host of Night of the Batman, and um, I'm going to do a fan film spotlight today on a on a web series called Nightwing Escalation. Now this, um, before I begin the review process, I'm just going to give my thoughts and just like that kind of stuff. Um, this was done on request, like I got requested to do this by the creator of this series, his name is also Alex, um, I'm not sure how to pronounce his last name, so I'm not going to try to, um, it's a very good series, so you should check it out, and, um, I'll get more into it, into the review process, there were three episodes, um, in the Escalation series, and, um, I'm going to, instead of reviewing each of them one at a time, I'm just going to review all three as like an ongoing story and just give my brief thoughts on each episode. Um, So, I guess um, I'll just go into the, just like overall my first impressions of it now before I review it. Um, First impressions of it was, the first few things I noticed anyway were, how over time the videos got better and better. The first one was a little bit slow. Um, I understand that, though. You have to set up characters, um, do stuff like that, um, basically introduce the environment. Um, and I like how how he um, he brought different characters into this series, like Rupert Thorne, which is well, he didn't bring Rupert Thorne. He's mentioned in this series, like the family of Rupert Thorne is mentioned. But um, Rupert Thorne is also in this series, kind of like my fan film series that I did for a while. I'm still gonna have that part up later, but it's not about that. Um, so yeah, so he has like I like how he brought in different characters from the comics, like the Huntress. He brought in Catwoman. He brought in um. The Riddler's sidekicks, Query and Echo, which um, I, I admit I don't know a lot about. I just know that they were they were popular in the 90s. Um, and I haven't really seen much of them since. Uh, it, yeah, and how he brought in different things going on in the comics, um, or were going on in the comics, like the whole um, Superman coming and Batman having to leave to go to Metropolis to try and stop Darkseid. Um, if that's what he was referencing, he did a good job of that. There's also little hidden references in this for people that are fans of Batman that they'll catch that necessarily other people wouldn't catch, but that doesn't really detract that much from the story. Um, I guess I'll go into the summary, or a brief summary. I don't want to summarize every single episode. I'll just give you guys a general idea. Um... So, basically this series is about Batman leaving to go to Metropolis and Nightwing sort of taking his place. And we get through this, um, that which is the main story along with other different stories involving different characters like Harvey Dent. And this is, um, he's recently out of Arkham and he's been, he's supposedly been healed but he's regressing again, um. And that's not the first time this has happened, um, there's been several stories um, if not just a few Batman stories about Harvey Dent getting healed and them learning it's not just like outward, it's inward too, like his what's wrong with him. Um I enjoyed that. I enjoyed seeing the duality of of it all. Um also just some of the other things like the street level crime, stuff like that. Um, how edgy this show was with stuff like drug use, um, language, and just, like, other, um, other sort of edgy things that they brought in that you wouldn't necessarily see in, like, just a normal Batman thing they brought into this, which I appreciated. It's more, more of an adult sort of thing. Um, yeah, so, that's pretty much the summary. I guess I'll just go into the as like basically what I liked about it. Um like I said earlier, I like the comic book references thrown out there. Um like some of the ones that aren't even comic book references that 
like the opening theme for the news station that's called Gotham Tonight, which which is also in like a lot of different Batman things. But the theme for it is the theme from Action News, the news channel that was on the Batman 1989 film, um, which I thought was pretty cool. And they also mentioned different people like Summer Gleason, which is, I'm not sure if she's in the comics or not. I pr- probably should look that up. But um, she was the news reporter and um, in the animated series. And also Jack Ryder, who who's at both in the comics and in, um, in the DC animated universe. Um, and they, it, this sort of works on, like, it's not one set continuity. Like, it has elements of different continuities in it. Like, it'll have that, like I mentioned earlier. It'll have elements of the Nolan verse with um, Bruce Wayne sounding like um, Christian Bale. And um, just the suit kind of looks like Christian Bale, too. But um, also have characters like Nightwing in there, which obviously Nightwing wasn't in there. And um, what what else I found sort of interesting was having Commissioner Loeb still be commissioner and yet have Harvey Bullock and Renee Montoya, which in the year one continuity and other earlier stories, they're not there yet. But I like how this sort of merged them together and sort of made its own continuity. I, I like that, how it took the other ones and just sort of merged them all together into one set continuity. Um, with different bits and pieces from different continuities before it. Um, yeah, I like how they had the Huntress in here. I'm not... Uh, I think, yeah, she had a different name in this. She was Helena, I think, Thorne or something like that. Um, the one in the comics is actually from an alternate universe where Batman sort of retired and had a kid with a uh, Catwoman named um, Helena Wayne and... Uh, she became the Huntress, a crime fighter. Um, I like how they changed that sort of to make it work with this universe um, and how they didn't have, like, a relationship towards each other. Um, I also like different things like like having those comic book characters that we don't get to see a lot in there and um, mentions of different comic book characters. Actually, appearances like Superman appears in this. Um... Catwoman, obviously, I said earlier. Um, other characters are mentioned. Like, I think Matt Hatter is mentioned in the first episode. Um, but, yeah. This, this is a pretty good series. Um, it does have its share of problems. Uh, overall, the atmosphere in this, and just, like, the general tone in it, is that that's the solid thing about it. There are certain things in this, though, that detract or make the whole narrative over these three episodes confusing. And um, I'll get to that, I guess, right now in the cons. Um, Okay, the cons. Um, The music. The music's okay in some places. Um, They use themes from, like, The Dark Knight, which I don't really mind that much, but only when it's appropriate. They'll just sometimes just have that. It seems like just to say, oh, look, we have this in this, which I'm fine as long as it fits the tone of the scene. Um, Yeah, some of the music is okay, but it just seems sort of sporadic. Like, it'll change from one style to the other and doesn't seem very consistent. Like, it'll go from, like, sort of like a jazzy score to a very orchestral score, which is kind of jarring a little bit when you're watching it, if you notice stuff like that. Now, um it does kind of distract from the story a little bit because when you're focusing on the music, you're obviously not focusing as much on the story. And um, it, it's really not that huge of a deal, but it does distract a little bit from the story, which can be um, troublesome. One other thing that kind of bugged me, but they kind of got nailed down later, was um, having characters and then... Like, not really introducing them. Like, I was watching it, and I had no idea who some of the characters were at first. I had to sort of, like, wait for them to say their names or something like that, because just off the bat, I had no idea who they were. Like, Syringe, I thought she was a comic character for a second, so I looked her up, and she wasn't, but um, that's a serial killer's voice begin. But, yeah, stuff like that kind of, that's, that's really not just, like, 
just sort of introduce the characters, I guess. So the audience isn't confused and doesn't know, like, who's talking or who they are. And this isn't really the fault of, um, of the writer of this, but some of the actors do look a little bit similar to each other, which it, it's not that big of a deal. I mean, they're not so similar that you get confused to who they are. But, yeah, it just sort of fix that, I guess, um, with the regards to just introducing characters to and it is improved over the next few episodes. Um, one other minor complaint is that the in the first episode, the the episode sort of made this big deal about the character of Harvey Dent, and um, it doesn't really touch that much on that story afterwards. It just sort of drops that story. Um, there are mentions of it, and there are brief scenes of it, but that was the focus for the first episode, and it just sort of lost that and just went to something else. And, um, so yeah, that was a little bit, that was a little bit, um, just sort of jarring to go from one episode where that was the focus to another one where it's something completely different with barely even a mention of Harvey Dent. That was a little bit bothersome. Um, also, this is just me, just personally. I know it seems like I'm I'm just like hating on this vi video, these videos a lot, but I actually really like them. Um, I didn't really like uh, whoever played Nightwing. I mean, he was okay. He he did an okay job, but just um, how he sounded was just not how I picture Nightwing. Just like his general, like he looks like Nightwing for the most part. Um, and he just didn't feel like Nightwing to me. That's that's just me personally, though. Um, at first, Batman, like he would go from like the sort of gravelly voice to just like a normal voice. And, that, and it was improved on in later episodes, which I appreciate. But yeah, that first episode, he just sort of switches back and forth between a normal-sounding voice and a more gravelly voice, which which is kind of weird. I mean, it's not that noticeable, but it's just that um, I'm glad they improved on it and made like it more consistent and made the voice sound better. Um, sometimes I would also, like going back to not being able to tell who the characters are, I would go through there and... Um, and not know, like, they didn't, they have a character on screen. I have no idea who they were until, like, I knew who Selena Kyle was because they said Selena Kyle's apartment, which they got better at doing stuff like that. Um, but, yeah, sometimes I'd go through it, and I'd have to read the, for the first episode, they got better at this, at making sure you knew who the characters were and just, like, stuff like that. But um, I had to read the synopsis in order to find out that, Harvey Dent got, like, um, constructive surgery. And that's really just the audio. That it got better, like, to where you could hear what they were saying more. But that's really, that's really not their fault. It's just uh, the video quality, which um, I, it, I felt like I was missing out on certain parts. But they, they improved on that later. And um, I could hear it better and understand what was going on more. Um... I guess, uh, try to think if I have anything else to say for the cons. Um, yeah, just that really, that was the only really big thing that bugged me was that I would go through a scene not having any idea who certain characters were. They got better at that. Um, another thing that I forgot to mention for the pros, though, was the camera work. Camera work is really good in this. It looks very professional, especially towards the second and third episode. They look really good. Um, certain certain things in it, though, um, I mean, it was a great fan film, but certain things were just kind of, kind of took away from it, like I mentioned earlier. Um, but they're really just like, if you kept watching, you would understand more of what was going on in the story. And those things, they either got rid of or became less distracting. Most of the time, they, they improved on them, which was good. I, I felt like from episode one to three that that they improved a lot story-wise and also just like quality-wise and 
and just in general. Um, so yeah, so this is this is a pretty great web series. I didn't watch the additional videos, so I might be missing out on some extra story elements that might help fill in some of the gaps that I mentioned earlier. So I'll definitely check those out. Um, thank you, Alex, for um, for mentioning this. I've seen it online before, but I haven't watched it before this. But thank you for recommending this. Um, I enjoyed them. And besides the minor problems I mentioned, I enjoyed it overall. And um, just keep making them. I, I enjoy them a lot. Um, I guess if I were to rate this, I would give it a 3.8 out of 5. And um, it, it, that means like it was it was actually really good. Um, but there are a few um, things that would keep it from going up. But I did really enjoy this. This is a this is a pretty great web series. And um, the quality, video quality is great. Story, once you get past that first one, it gets better. And um, get more invested, stuff like that. And just overall, the mood and atmosphere are really good in this. Uh, um, I think any Bat fan, along with just anyone who who is interested in Nightwing, or just like a casual fan, I think would enjoy this, even if they don't get all the like references and stuff like that. I don't think that detracts from the story all that much. Um so I guess that's about it. Um so you guys if you want me to review any more fan films out there, if anyone out there that is making fan films wants me to review theirs, I'd be happy to just send me either a message or a comment on my channel, either that or on this video. And I hope you guys enjoyed this. I would love for some of you guys that are watching this right now to recommend me review different Batman related things. Um, thank you, Alex, for recommending me to review this and uh good job. And uh yeah, I, you guys are awesome. Thanks for all the support you've been giving me. You guys are great. Like, comment, subscribe and hey. Um if there's a Batman related thing that I haven't reviewed yet and you want me to, just uh send me a message recommending it to me. I'd be happy to review it. Okay, that's about it. I guess I'll see you guys.